Welcome to FYF Fest. Yeah. 2011. Couldn't ask for it. So we bow here. One-handed. One-handed yes. bow. I'm working on cultivating that. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. We'll see how we can do it with the end of the day. Seeing how far I can take things, how far I can catch on. Nice. So, um, you guys already played. How'd it go? It awesome. Actually, yeah. It was great. Sunny. It was just full of, full of vibes. Yeah. Good. A lot of people get here early. Yeah. yeah. It was a pretty good crowd, actually. It was a really good crowd. I was really, really happy with the turnout. Proud of our locals for waking up early, getting dressed, getting here right as the door opened. You guys are based here, and um, I love the, the new album's great. Thank um, you. Thank you. I've seen you guys are getting quite a few accolades on that, and yeah. uh, people, uh, people can understand more of the lyrics this time. Yeah, um, they speak English. Assuming <laughs> they speak English, <laughs> of course. The Hebrew speakers are bummed. Are they? Tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big big backlash from the uh, yeah. the Hebrew speaking the, the, masses. The, Dozen and a half Hebrew speaking fans we have. <laughs> they just they put the kibosh on us. <laughs> yeah. Was there any reason for uh, for flipping back to English or uh, yeah, there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, this this record was a process of kind of articulation. Sort of um, we were a, 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 a a band with many members and it was kind of loose as to who was in the band and the songs were big and loose and we kind of stripped down the band members to a solid core of five people and um, just kind of honed in. I, we like to say that we're kind of painting with finer detail whereas before it was kind of these big broad strokes, you know. Um, I think singing in English is sort of a, a, a part of that process because the Hebrew definitely helped me learn how to sing and how to... It, it helped me learn how to, how to make music, really. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really sing in that way before I sang Hebrew. And now, uh, now I'm a, kind of applying that to English. Applying what I learned there, then to now. And um, just honing in more. De more details. And since English is my first language. Yeah. So what was kind of it the then? easiest way to, to get those details in there <laughs> without consulting a whole body of Hebrew-speaking people. Like I did the first time around. So it's a little, a little more effortless. It's more personal. Yeah, yeah. it's more intimate. Yeah. It's a lot more personal for all of us too. I yeah. feel because we all kind of grew up, you know, products of the '80s and '90s and, and all this music that influenced us in like the new wave era and all this, uh, you know, British pop music. Mm -hmm. It's kind of coming out in the second album. I think it's kind of important to recognize it and kind of embrace it and, and really love it for yeah. for what it is and. Bring it to bring it to the spectrum now. So, what was it about Hebrew that helped you to learn how to sing? Was it your bar mitzvah training um, or something? Not at all. <laughs> um, you know, it's something like really somewhat ineffable, and and I hate to use the M word, but kind of magical that happened with, yeah. with, with that. And something about us getting into this trance. We used to just you know play a riff for like 20 minutes, mm -hmm. yeah, and just kind of trance out. And the Hebrew kind of came out of that mindset. And, helped us all kind of reach that place and um, I don't know it just kind of like you know it was like a pu vocal puberty nice um, in some way uh, I don't know just there was a freedom to it that I, I can't explain and something kind of subconscious about it with my past and roots and um, I was born in Israel so it's definitely something that had been inside of me and well there's a lot of things going on but whatever it was and I, I'm kind of I'm glad that I, I can't quite pinpoint it because that's what makes it kind of that pop much power, more yeah. powerful, you know. But um, I don't know, something about it just allowed me to kind of like be myself on, on stage and sing the way I want to sing and I don't know, just help me kind of move along in my musicality, you know, and performance. And now that we've been doing that for a couple of years on tour and everything, um, you know, it's time to take it to the next stage. And that's what this album is for us. And it's a reflection of all the touring we've done and everything we've done as a band. The lyrics do reflect some of that as well. So, so you guys are based in LA. Are there any uh, particular spots you like? You know, whether it be bars, coffee shops, hiking trails. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Any particular favorites? So many. I mean, Elysian Park is a, a sanctuary for me, I feel. Yeah. You know, in, in the midst of all this, you know, Concrete jungle, you got a little piece of nature right in the middle of it. I, yeah. I find that amazing. About we lose Sal to LA nature all the time, we just disappear. 
He might come back with like a scraped knee or almost a might, broken rib. Yeah, he might. You know, all he takes with him is a sack of weed, and and That's all I take and the <laughs> the determination to succeed. He's a survivor. He knows how to survive in the wild. Yeah. In LA, you know, it is a city, but it does have a lot of wilderness. It's definitely a concrete jungle, though. <laughs> so, lots of places to tumble. Lots of places. Great. But what, what, what what's your favorite taco shop? Oh, I mean, wow. This is a big debate. In our I really band. like, you know, I like going to hang out at La Paria restaurant on Sunset because it's the decor is like there's it's every holiday is displayed there. So like, no matter what day it is, there's something being celebrated there. And they have the really awesome, um, like Latino Elvis that comes in and serenades you. And the food's actually pretty good. Margaritas are cheap. It's not like a commercial. Yeah, I know you're right. <laughs> they come, they got the guacamole cart. It's just, it's so LA and it's like, families are there and burnout alcoholics are there. And I don't know, I, love, I really like that place. As yeah. far as, and I do like the tacos. That's why I usually like the tacos. I like the fish tacos Baja, just to throw that out there. Uh, the, bon. the best taco in Ensenada, that yeah. place? Yeah, it looks. Yeah. It's really good, right? I like that place. Really? Yeah. See, I'm so, sure I, yeah, I can see it's a definite point. Ongoing point. Seven, yeah. seven Mare on Sunset. Oh yeah, that's a really good. Dollar, dollar, dollar tacos. Don't eat three though, guys. If you eat three, you're asking for it. Exactly. You know, the limit should really be two, but they, they try to push the three. The they two, do. Three they really want to push that idea. I don't, I, I don't understand why. It's like, three, <laughs> it's like you can either eat two for like five dollars or three for four dollars or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you have to eat three. You know? I think you guys have a taco vlog in the making here. Yeah. Oh, sure. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thank you.